<laughs> hey guys, it's the Metal Blade 5, and welcome to my response to Game Theory's FNAF 4 Games, One Story Theory. As with every Game Theory response, I have nothing against Matt Pet or Game Theory. I just want to point out the flaws that I personally found with this theory. Now the reason why I'm depressed is because, like I hinted at the end of my last response video, this theory is a follow-up to another FNAF theory made by MatPat, which was the clue that solves FNAF theory, which states that Five Nights at Freddy's is actually all a dream, and it's a really good theory! It's one of the best theories I've seen from MatPat, and when I heard that there was a follow-up coming, I actually got super hyped! It was the most hyped I've ever got for an episode of Game Theory, even back when I was a fan. And then the theory came out, and I was... DISAPPOINTED! This is because I personally found a number of flaws with this theory, and it killed the hype that I once had. Now before I begin, I want to make a quick disclaimer. As people who have watched the video would know, the video is two hours long. This is because the theory is 20 minutes long and is immediately continued by an episode of GT Live, MatPat's then new Game Theory livestream show. And I didn't have the time to watch the whole live stream, well, even any of the live stream to begin with. So if I say anything in this video that is covered in the live stream, that's why. And if that does happen, please let me know in the comments. But with that, let's move on to the theory. So one thing that MatPat states in this video, which I think affects the theory as a whole, and what I'll probably refer to back a bit later, is that MatPat mentions that Scott Coffin, the creator of FNAF, if, in case you didn't know, said that he got the majority of what he said in this FNAF 2 theory right, which causes MatPat to use a lot of evidence he presented in that theory. The big issue with this, however, is that Scott didn't say what MatPat got right and what he got wrong. He only says he got the majority right, but doesn't say what MatPat got right, and he doesn't say to what extent of the majority was right. For example, 90% of something will be a majority, but so would say 55% as it's over 50%, mean that MatPat could have still got a decent amount of the theory wrong. Therefore, what I'm saying is that MatPat using the explanation of it was in my FNAF 2 theory, which I got mostly right, doesn't hold much water as there's no proof to what specific evidence MatPat uses in the theory was actually right. Now the first issue I have with this theory, as well as the biggest issue I have, which killed the hype for me, is that MatPat says that Fredbear's Family Diner and Freddy Fazbear's Pizza are actually open at the same time. This is because of the tapes in FNAF 3, which are from a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza restaurant, stating that an incident occurred at a sister location. This is because a sister company is two companies that are owned by a parent company. For example, as KFC and Pizza Hut are sister companies since they are owned by the same parent company. MatPat concludes that Fredbear's Family Diner and Freddy Fazbear's Pizza are sister companies with the parent company being Fazbear Entertainment. I have a number of issues with this piece of evidence. The main issue being that in the FNAF read tapes, it uses the word location rather than company, which could mean a different thing. Company means a commercial business while location means a place. Therefore, when it's referring to a sister location, it could just be referring to another branch of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, rather than a different company. Now, I don't possess the knowledge in business to know if sister location and sister company mean the same thing, but I tried to do research for this video by looking up the meaning of sister location specifically, and instead it came up specifically with sister company, meaning that once again, the use of a different word could mean something different. Another big issue I have with this is that Fredbear's Family Diner and Freddy Fazbear's Pizza are so similar. They're both restaurants with animatronic bears with microphones and top hats as mascots with a rabbit sidekick. If they were open at the same time, shouldn't they be suing each other for copyright infringement? Since the games likely take place in America, and from what I gather, American companies love suing others, so it would seem weird why neither would suffer from legal action. This also takes me over to the whole Fazbear Entertainment as the parent company part of the theory, because why would a company buy two practically identical companies? It would just be incredibly redundant. That's like if a company possessed the rights to both McDonald's and Burger King. So I don't know why the company would buy two identical businesses. Also, the parent company, as Matt Beck calling it, is called 
Fazbear Entertainment, which is obviously in reference to Freddy Fazbear, so if it did own the rights to both bear restaurants, why would it be named after one of them over the other? Going back to the example MatPat uses of KFC and Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell, I guess, we don't have Taco Bell in the UK, their parent company is called Yum Brands. The name doesn't reference one of the businesses it owns. It's not called KFC Brands or Pizza Brands. So, like I just said, if Fazbear Entertainment is a parent company that also owns Fredbear's Family Diner at the same time, why would the name only reference one of the businesses they own? To me, it seems far more likely that the actual case is what everybody else thought prior to this theory, which is that Fredbear's Family Diner was a business that was sold off and rebranded as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Also, the whole evidence for this comes from the FNAF free tapes, which, like what I briefly mentioned in my theory on who I think Purple Guy really is, the tapes are from FNAF free, meaning that Scott might not have planned that out. What I mean by that is that Scott might not have been planning to make a FNAF 4 when recording the FNAF free tapes, and thus didn't think ahead, which creates a bit of a plot hole. When Scott was making the first Five Nights at Freddy's, he didn't plan on making a sequel until it became popular. So, it's possible he just wasn't th thinking of a FNAF 4 when developing the third game. Plus, there is more evidence to suggest the incident that is being referred to is Fredbear's Family Diner instead of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, meaning that this one line is kind of an outlier. Also, MatPat believes this because in the video he says that the Give Cake Mini game happens in Fredbear's Family Diner, because Scott said the majority of the theory was right. Again, like I said before, just reference back to my previous argument, I mean that it doesn't confirm that this specific part of the theory was right. So next, Matt Pet says that the five children were murdered in the safe room in 1983 when FNAF 4 takes place. I have no issue with saying that the children were murdered in the safe room, since it would explain why the bodies aren't found and why the killer gets away with it despite being arrested, which always bothered me in, when making my purple guy furry. But I don't agree with it being in 1983 for the reasons why I think that Fred Bears and Freddy Fazbear's were not open at the same time. And that instead, the murders occurred in the first Freddy Fazbear's pizza after Fred Bears is rebranded due to being sold off. Because of the incident with the crying child in FNAF 4. Also, if the crying child saw the murders, wouldn't he call the police? Or at least tell someone? In FNAF 4, he's just waiting for his birthday party, showing that, oh, he's not bothering to do anything important if he actually did see these murders. Continuing with the whole, the murders happened in 1983 argument that MatPat uses, he also says that the FNAF 4 child is scared of the yellow suits because he saw a purple guy stuffing the children's bodies into the suits because of the lines, remember what you saw, and you know what will happen when he catches you. Going back to my purple guy theory, I don't believe that this is the case, not only because I think the murders were more likely to occur after FNAF 4, but also because in my theory, I presented the argument that the crying child has automatonophobia, which is a fear of anything that falsely resembles a sentient being, including animatronics. Even though I came up with this argument, I think it still holds water, since it explains his fear of the suits and why his brother scares him with the foxy mask, as well as the line, since it could just be his phobia making him think that something bad will happen to him if he gets caught by these things he's afraid of. Because remember, phobia just means irrational fear. MatPat's next piece of evidence is that the plushies the crying child owns in his room are actually representing his friends who were the murdered children and possessed the animatronics, which is reflected in the line, These are my friends. I don't exactly believe this, again, not only because I think the murders happened later. There isn't anything in FNAF 4 which suggests that the crying child has any friends who at least aren't plushies. Also, more importantly, the crying child obviously doesn't know about the animatronics becoming possessed, so why would he reference the plushies being, a, being his friends due to them possessing animatronics when he doesn't know about that? I always saw the line as them being his friends because he's not scared of them like with the animatronics in suit. Because when I was studying uh, uh, bleh, autonom auto uh, automatonophobia, that's such a hard word to say for my purple guy theory, it didn't say that stuffed toys applied to this fear. Also, like I said in my theory, I personally think the child's brother and his friends were murdered since they're wearing masks of the four animatronics, suggesting that they become them. And without spoiling my theory, I think the brother and his friends fall in line with Purple Guy's possible motive. 
So for the next part of this theory, MatPat abandons the assumption that the crying shall be coming the puppet from his Why FNAF Will Never End theory, because he believes that the puppet is the one speaking at the end of the sixth night in FNAF 4, because the text used is in a different color to all the other characters, including psychic friend Fredbear, as MatPat continues to call him. My issue is that, for one, the puppet is never shown to be able to speak in the game, so the assumption that the puppet is speaking is a bit shaky. But more importantly, when in context with what MatPat has said for the rest of this theory, the puppet being the one speaking makes little sense, as he says that the puppet is the spirit of the child from the Give Cake Mini game, which he says takes place before FNAF 4. And the first line that the puppet is supposedly saying is, We are still your friends. When in this theory's context, the puppet doesn't know him, so he can't be his friend. MatPat also says that the line of, I will put you back together, is actually referring to all of the murdered children and the crying child, but this is a bit of a contradiction since earlier on in the theory, being the part about his friends and the plushies, MatPat said they were already possessing the animatronics. As for why the text is a different color, I have no idea. The color would suggest that someone else is speaking, but since I don't believe it's the puppet, I don't know who. The only thing I can think of is maybe it's a voice in the crying child's head, but that's a speculation. Next piece of evidence is that in the last birthday minigame of FNAF 3 is the puppet putting everyone back together, like he says, supposedly in FNAF 4. While I do believe this is replicating the crying child's birthday in FNAF 4, as I also covered in my purple guy theory, but like I said before, I think the brother and his friends were the ones murdered, since the other four children at the party are wearing the masks of the four main animatronics, just like the brother and his friends, which matches up with the birthday in FNAF 4 even further than what MatPat suggests. Plus, once again, I do not see this as the puppet putting everyone back together, but more so moving on to the afterlife, as this is the last minigame we're getting the good ending. And all the dead children are reunited, since you are appeasing the souls of the dead children in the other minigames, I think this is the children gathering together to move on to the afterlife. Also, MatPat uses the fact that the digits you put in to access the Stage 01 minigame in FNAF 3 is the color code for Purple Guy backwards to say that it represents the puppet trying to reverse Purple Guy's work. I think that is a bit of a stretch to say since it's only a color code, I meaning that Scott could have just used that code as a bit of an easter egg. Plus, if it means anything, it could just represent the purple guy becoming Springtrap, in my opinion, since in the Stage 01 minigame, you start off next to Springtrap. When moving on to FNAF 2, MatPat says that purple guy murdered another five children, which possessed the toy animatronics. Again, I don't believe this, because while there are dead children in the Save the minigame, we never see reference to this again. And it's possible that maybe it just represents the children who are already possessing the animatronics. Also, we never see the puppet transfer the souls into the toy animatronics. Plus, in FNAF 3, we only see five dead children in both the ending and the last birthday minigame, along with the puppet. If the toy animatronics were possessed, why would there only be five dead children here? Also, this contradicts something MatPat said in his FNAF 3 theory, which was that the killer doesn't kill children at the FNAF 2 pizzeria, otherwise, in MatPat's words, he would have gone through a school bus of children right now. Instead, he just tampered with the toy animatronics, which I think is the actual case. Once again, in my Purple Guy theory, I suggest that maybe the object that Purple Guy holds in his hand is a device to tamper with the animatronics, like MatPat originally said in his FNAF free theory before contradicting himself there, as this could explain why the game crashes when touching him. I think this is why the toy animatronics become more violent. Purple Guy reprogrammed them and made them think that all adults were a threat, as Film Guy mentions that the toy animatronics just stared at the adults. So that's where we get to the theory closing. Only other thing before MatPat talks about the FNAF book that I have an issue with it is saying that the puppet burned down Fazbear's Fright in FNAF 3, since there is no evidence to suggest what caused the place burned down. I personally think that the security guard did it, but that's just speculation. Now for the book, MatPat says that Scott's statement on it, about the plot being simpler on a different timeline, confirms what MatPat was getting at with this theory. At least that's what I got from what he said. I've heard that the book isn't canon to the games. I don't know, this is the first time I ever heard that the book was in the fucking theory. So, so that statement is more likely referring to the book not being canon, which means that it's on a different timeline. 
And that's it, the Fury ends and the live stream starts after that. Again, I've got nothing against MapFat. And before people start saying that I didn't agree with the Fury because it went against my own Fury that I brought up numerous times in this video, I'm all for admitting mistakes, as I do with my most recent countdown at this point in time. Plus, the Dream Fury goes against my Fury as well, and I thought it was good, so it's not that it goes against my Fury, I just think that some of the points in my theory can be used to argue against the legitimacy of some of MatPat's claims. What bothers me is that some of the things in this theory to me make absolutely no sense and goes against what MatPat has said in his other theories without him admitting it like he did with the puppet. Which in my opinion made this theory have more holes than Swiss cheese and led to it being really disappointing for me. But with that... That's the end of this video. Hopefully this will be the last time I'll ever talk about Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, there aren't any episodes of Game Theory out right now that I have issues with to the point of making a video. And while I've said before that there is another Theory channel I plan on making response videos to, I do have exams in about a month, so my next response video will probably be on something else. Maybe something that only lasts a minute.